Hi there. I have an interesting idea for a new series for this channel, which hopefully is a very interesting series and we could see a lot more of it next year in 2021. I hope you're having a great holiday at the moment, approaching Christmas. Um, so this is Tiny Chess Instance Hash 1, the first in the series. It's against one of my favorite grandmasters playing on Lee Chess, a Greek grandmaster called Arnalos. That's his nickname. Go and look him up. He's a multi-time Greek champion. I was very, very happy at this point in the game, in the recent weekly Blitz Arena, uh, to have a, a decent possession. Usually I'm blown away by him. He's pretty pretty decent. <laughs> so anyway, he plays King D4. I play King G7. We have King E4, King G6. Um, I'm, I've offered a draw at one point around here. Off the check, I'm thinking, this is fine. I've just nicked a pawn. I'm a pawn up. He plays Knight D6. And for some reason, okay, we're at move 56. I know it's only a blitz game. But what would you play here with black? If I give you five seconds to think about this. Position. So what would you play here with black? So black to play. What a great move here. Okay, a great move is actually knight a7. <laughs> yes, I've tricked you. A great move is actually knight a7. And it's interesting philosophically why this is a great move. And us Greeks like me and all us, yes, we like philosophizing. So why is this a great move from a philosophical angle? This tiny chess incident, I, why have I elected this as, as the first in the series? Well, one of my favorite fun quotations from Nimsevich is the past pawn is a criminal. It must be kept under lock and key. And by that he meant blockade. And there's a whole thing about blockading pawns, blockading past pawns, especially they're criminals to be kept under lock and key. He goes on to say that active surveillance isn't enough. You need to keep them under lock and key. But actually, you know, there's something which I think is missed out, actually, <laughs> that if you actually nip something in the bud, as that other expression goes, nipping something in the bud, you wouldn't let the opponent have a past pawn anyway. And suppose you had very, very limited time on the clock. Isn't it better not to have a potential candidate criminal in the first place? Unless you can guarantee, to absolutely guarantee, and to do that, you do need a lot of time usually to check things out. If you can't really guarantee that in a time constraint, why would you let your opponent have a potentially dangerous past pawn? Because those past pawns, you know, when they go to the eighth rank, they become queens. They're quite dangerous. So if you did say knight takes d6, unfortunately, <laughs> you don't have time to have active surveillance, let alone a blockade here. You might have thought the active surveillance move, king f6, is sufficient. And this, this is going to simplify and win because you might have thought that d7, king e7. However, guess what he plays here? If I give you five seconds here, what does white play here? <laughs> yes, <laughs> to my embarrassment, g5. And yes, the king is lured away, and now d7 queens. But anyway, the reason I, I bring this up, this is what I call a tiny chess incident. And I think if I don't bring these up, you know, maybe quite a few of them, they add up to something insightful. This might not be insightful to you at all. You might not have even heard of Nimzovich's quotation or metaphor about passports being criminals and the need for blockade. And you might not have related it before, though, uh, to you know nipping things in the bud, you know, sort of things at the root issue, trying to tackle the cause, cause rather than symptoms. But to me, yeah, I think I thought, hang on, a useful extension when I get a similar game situation, when limited in time, is just don't allow the opponent to have a past pawn. It's as simple as that. Don't have the issue in the first place. In fact, you can even step further back. You can step further back. Let's go Petrosian. All the, you know, Petrosian was risk averse. Let's not even have the risk of them even having the possibility of creating a past pawn. We can even go further, recursively back to minimize risk. But here, yeah, I, I was a pawn up. I had just taken a pawn from my grandma's opponent. So happy. But here is the time to consolidate knight a7 and then I can you know bounce back in the game knight on the rim is dim only for a little bit here 
Knight C6, I'll be absolutely fine. I'd be fine. I'd actually be better. So anyway, this is the tiny chess incident. incident. For me, it's useful if they have a bit of philosophy to them. I'm hoping there's a tiny bit of philosophy here for you to think about when managing your opponent's pass pawns, especially on the fast time controls. Please let me know if you find this useful. And I'll be getting these incidents from various games that I happen to play in the evening. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it. And check out my courses, please. King's Crusher TV Chess Tactics has rave reviews. That is a foundational course. It's got over a thousand students. It's got rave reviews. Check out those reviews on King's Crusher TV Chess Tactics. There's also a pawn structure course. Yeah, check these courses out. Okay, and you can always invite me for a game. If you go to King's Crusher TV, register, I'll invite you for a turn-based game, five days move. Okay, thanks very much.